greetings to our dear participants. At this time, I would like to share with you another uh, demonstration about assessment. So since uh, pandemic time started, we have no choice but to adapt this what we call online uh, teaching and uh, online learning. And we also have to consider this in our teaching strategies, like, or in our teaching pedagogies, where we have to adapt the online uh, techniques in order for us to measure the learning of our students. Okay, so through this, we'll be able to uh, identify or we'll be able to uh, realize the learning or how far have our students gone in terms of their online learning. Okay, so we'll be doing this what we call assessment to evaluate their learning. So let me share to you this uh, outline so that uh, you'll be guided of what we are to have in this uh, training. So assessment is our very concept of the topic. In this uh, training, we shall be creating this what we call online quiz. And we'll be using this platform under the Google Suite. So we have this what we call Google Forms. So in order for us to make use of this feature of the Google Suites, we have to have this what we call Google account, and then of course the internet connection. So what shall we do in this uh, activity? So of course we shall be creating a quiz content, and after which we have to send it to our students online. Okay, so let's start it now. So the very first thing that we are to consider or the very first thing that we are to do in uh, creating an online quiz to, is to identify a platform which we'll be using because there are many uh, platforms where you can uh, execute or perform the, the online quiz or the quizzes. There are Nearpad, there are quizzes and the like. Only that uh, uh, I personally uh, recommend the use of the Google Forms because by experience, I find it uh, efficient, okay, as online quiz platform. So there are actually lots of, uh, of uh, features that Google Form have, but I'll only be sharing to you how you are to make a quiz and uh, check it automatically using the said uh, feature of the Google. So the first thing that we shall do is to log into our account, okay? So before we uh, start creating a quiz, we must first do the logging in. So since I'm already logged or I log in already to my account, but uh, for you, I recommend that you are to use uh, your account under the sipc.edu.ph I hope you can still remember the password and your username in that uh, account. But if you anymore uh, forgot the password, you can just uh, message us so we can help you. Maybe we can reset your password or if you forgot your account name, you can also uh, seek our help so we can give you your account and the password okay, as needed. So let's start now, the creation of an online quiz. So if you are already, if you had already logged into your account, your Google account, you can just uh, try to go to this uh, Google apps here. Okay, so I hope here, if you can see there are this, what we call 
uh, something like matrix here, matrix button, matrix button here. Click at that. They are the Google Apps. Then look for, look for this what we call forms. This one. Click on that. It will open. So there are many uh, templates here in the Google form. There is this what we call blank form where you have to start a new form. Then we have here blank quiz, event registration, assessment, customer feedback, exit ticket, and the like. Okay. But at this time, I would like to just uh, make use of this blank quiz this is what we call uh, check some something like check uh, uh, some, with this with this button, okay? So click it here because I, I use this every time I make a quiz because this uh, uh, template has this feature where you can automatically have the quizzes checked by the application. So click it here. To start. So here is the window for the blank quiz. You can change the file name of your form here. Like suppose I want to create a quiz for one of my courses, like ICT 111. Or put here the content of the quiz so that you'll be guided of, of the content. So it will, will be easier for you to retrieve the, the quiz later if you need it. So suppose the operators. The topic that we have in this quiz is about operators. So that's also what you are to type here. So you have to copy it and paste it here. Then try to have a description as to how your student will answer the, the quiz or just try to have an important uh, uh, reminder here or uh, direction, something like that, where you want the student to, where you, which you think, uh, and there is a need for the student to know before they start the quiz. To read, to read the items and select the correct answers from the given options and so on. So you can just have here the important reminders or the instructions or directions for the students so that they'll be guided in taking the quiz. So this uh, uh, field can be contained with the question, first quest with your first questions First question and the, the options. So you can just have to click, you can just click here, then type your question. So there are many ways where you can, which you can enter your quiz content. It could be the copy paste, okay, or it could be typing method. So it's up to you where you're comfortable. So I'll, but I'll be demonstrating the two ways which I use in my personal activity in creating this kind of uh, uh, piece. Okay, so suppose I'll just type the, the first item. So it refers Okay, so I'm done with the first uh, question of the first item. So next thing I'll do is to specify my options. So suppose I have four options, but make sure that you already know what's the correct answer of those options. Of course, we know it, okay? So first, uh, so since we are teachers, we have to, of course, follow the, the procedure or of the policies in test construction that the principles of test construction. So we have to arrange it, okay, the, the, the options alphabetically or depending on the item. 
So, suppose formula. So, next, click up here for, for under option, syntax. Click another option, operator. Click another, code. Okay. Okay, so I must consider the alphabetical order of my options. So, to do the rearrangement of the options, I just have to click it here, then drag it to my desired location. So, I want that the code will be the first option. Followed by the formula, then maybe the operator, drag, then drop there. Then the syntax. And those are the options. Now, I want to specify the correct answer. Okay, so I'll be using the multiple choice uh, type of test. So I'll click at the answer key here. Then specify how many points I want to give to this item. I want it one point. You can also have two points or three points depending on the, the weight of that particular item. Okay, but I want it give I want to give up one point. So specify here now the correct answer. So the correct answer is operator. Click at that. Okay. So suppose you have clicked another option and you want to uncheck it or unselect it, just click it again to unselect it. So if you are done, just click done bottom here. Then it's done. Okay, so this is the first item. Now our question is how we can make another item or how can we make another question or item two. Okay, so all you have to do is to just click the duplicate button here to add more uh, item or to add another question. Okay, so you just have to change the, the content of the question or the item here because it will just duplicate the first uh, item or the first question with all its options, okay? So in case you want to delete the item because uh, you don't want any more item, just have to click delete button here it will just be deleted that's also true with this first item but i want to create another okay so at this time i would like to just do the copy paste of the piece from a document or from a certain file i don't want to type it because i think it slows down my activity or my task so i've here already i have prepared already another document Okay, where I can copy and paste, okay, my test. So, I will just uh, display the test at the right side and then at the left side, my Google Form window. Okay, so I have displayed two windows at a time. At the left is my Google Form or Google Forms window, my online quiz, and the right is my document containing my quiz where I can copy and paste it to my Google Form window. So this is the second item. So all I have to do is to just copy the first, the, the, the item from my Word document uh, file, then paste here so that I will not anymore type. Then Maybe delete the options, which is not the same to the second item. Then I'll just copy the options from my Word document, then paste here. Automatically, it will just be displayed or pasted to the Google Forms. Okay, so this is already the result of my copy-paste activity. So I'll just specify the answer to the second uh, item. So it's statistical. I want same point, it's just one point, then click done if we are done. So same procedure to do another item, just click the duplicate button here, okay? Then change the content of the third item respectively, okay? So depends on the, another, on the content of your third item. So same procedure, just copy, then paste here, or control V to paste, control C to copy, then change the options. Just leave here one option so you can paste the rest of the options. So go back to the Word document where you can in your quiz. 
and then paste here or control P. I mean control V to paste. Then change the correct answer. If the first isn't the correct answer, just have to go back answer P here. So change it into another uh, option. Or since this is the correct answer, I'll just go back here. So that's it. So still one point. If you are done, no for more corrections, then click at done button. Okay, so this is the third uh, item. Okay, so suppose I want to just give this item, I want to add this item. I want to give it three points. Okay, so I, I change the point uh, value of this uh, item. Click done. Then you're done. Okay, so that's it. That's how we go about with the creation of the content of our quiz using Google Forms uh, platform or application. So the next thing, you can see here the total points, okay, of your quiz. So it's five points. So the next thing we shall do is to set or apply settings to this uh, quiz. Okay, so all we have to do is to click the settings button here beside the send button, click it here. Then we have here in the settings uh, window, uh, three tabs, the general, the presentation, and the quizzes. So under the general tab or under the general settings, we have to collect email addresses. I want to collect email addresses so that I'll be able to identify the student that had responded to this uh, online quiz. So the default format is to restrict to ECT users, to users in ECT Miyako campus and its trusted organizations. Since I don't want it to limit to ECT Miyako campus users or those uh, under the sapc.edu.ph account, I want all other accounts to have access to this uh, online quiz I will uncheck this, okay? So I don't want it to limit to one response, but if you want, just click or check the limit to one response here. I don't want to limit. I want my students to uh, perform the said online piece again and again until they get a perfect score or master the, the content, okay, of the quiz. So respondents can edit after submit, check or see summary charts and text responses. So it's up to you guys. If you want this to be checked, if you want it applied in your online piece. But to me, I want only to collect email addresses and the rest will be unchecked. Okay, so let's move on to the presentation tab here. So I want to show progress bar. I want my student to see how far had they, how they gone with the quiz. Then I want to shuffle the question. Okay, so I want to shuffle the question so that the first item will be will not be the first item of the next uh, students or to the next uh, examinee, something like that. Or I want to show link to submit in their response, meaning if they're done with the quiz, I want them to, uh, to if they can still uh, click on the link if they want to perform the same quiz again, okay? So confirmation message, what, will, that, what message will appear if they're already done or if they have submitted their online quiz or their quiz? So let's see, good job. It's up to you what text you want to give to your students after they take the quiz, if they've submitted it, it. So next is the quizzes tab. So make this a quiz, I'll make this a quiz. Then uh, release quiz, yes, immediately after each submission so that they will know their score. Next, this content can see missed questions, correct answers, point values. So if you want to, to show your students their missed questions or correct answers and point values, then you can just check it. But if you don't want, just uncheck. So to me, in my own uh, quiz, I don't like my students to just see right away the correct answers. I want them to figure out the correct answer themselves. So click at save button here if you are done. Then it will be applied to the quiz you have created. Okay, so the next thing we shall do is to send this quiz to our students. 
So it could be in their group chat, it could be it could be in your Facebook social learning group, or it will be in the kind in the LMS that you're using in the chat or through email, or through messenger. Okay. So let's send this now to our students. Click at the send button here. Okay, so this will appear. You can do it by sending an email. Okay. Send an email to your student like I want to send it to my email address, Helen Perlas at sipc.edu.ph. Then click the send button. So that will be sent to my email address. So I'll be checking it in my email if I have received it. Okay, so I'll try to look at it in my email address. Okay. So go to email or Gmail. Here is already, here is the, the quiz that I have sent to my email address. I'll check it. Suppose I'm the student, I want to answer the quiz. I just have to click, no? If you can see there is this instruction or there's this message. I've invited you to fill out a form. ICT 111 operators. Read carefully the items to select the correct answers from the given options. So you can read or see here the descriptions that I've included in my online quiz. So I'll just click at the fill out form to answer on or to respond to the quiz. Okay, so again, click the fill out form to respond to the quiz. So I'll specify my email address. So like Helen Relas at sipc.edu. H supposed to. So I'll answer the quiz. All the types of economies operators. Physical. Economic manipulation. So operator. Okay. If you want to uncheck, okay, your answer, or if you want to unselect the answer or the option button just have to click again okay, in case you want to don't if you don't want to answer or something like that or if you want to leave it blank okay but i'll answer okay so after which if i'm already done suppose i'm a student if i'm already done with the quiz i just have to click at the submit button here then you will see here the text that i've specified earlier in the settings so good job if i want to view the score click at the view button here Okay, so I will know the result of my quiz. I have here wrong answer, three points. So my score is two because the item that I got the wrong answer with is worth three points. So I only have two points out of five with three items. So that's it. Okay, so that's about uh, responding to an email or to an online quiz sent through email. So... Let's go back to our quiz here. What if, okay, you since I have answered the quiz, you can already see here the responses. If you try to look at the, the two tabs here in this online quiz, you can see there the questions tab and the responses tab. And you can see if the, the students had already responded or if there are already students who have responded to your online quiz because it will appear here. The figure or the number of students that had responded will display will be displayed here okay so click it here so i have here the result i have one student who took the test it's helen perlas score two okay released march 2 today so that's it okay so what if you want to send the same quiz because you have uh, uh, five class or i mean you have uh, 50 uh, 30 students in that class okay so suppose I want to send a link to my group chat, to the group chat of that class so that you can just click it and the answer the quiz. Okay, so click at the send here again. I will not send it through email. At the same, I'll just do the sending by link. Okay, let's shorten the URL. So click or check the shorten URL. Your, <laughs> check the shorten URL here. And click copy or control C to copy. Then you go to your Facebook or your group chat. 
and send that to the students or to the group of students or to the group chat so others can respond to it. So suppose I want to send it to myself again, okay? To another account, Helen Carlos. So I want to send the quiz to Helen Perlas. So paste the copied link, send it. Okay, so here it is. Helen will be able to respond. It will appear like this in the, in the messenger. And if the students will respond, they have to just click at the link. Then they'll be able to respond to the quiz. Okay, so that's it. Helen Perlas, 526 at gmail.com. And the student can answer the quiz. Okay. Then can submit it. So same procedure. Then good job. View score. That's it. The student, if the student want to perform or uh, do the same test or try again, they can submit another response by clicking up here. Click up here. The student will be able to uh, take another test or same test right after the first one. Okay, then submit another response. Okay, so that's about the responding to the online quiz. Okay, so we are done. You, if you can see, there is already two responses here. So they are Helen Perlas at sipc.edu.ph, which has a score, who has a score of two. Then Helen Perlas, 56 at gmail.com, that has a score of four. So you'll be able to see the students who have responded to your quiz by their email address. That's why you have to require them to, or you have to collect the email address of your students when you give them an online quiz. Okay, so unless you want only to know their responses without knowing their identity, you can just, uh, uh, and check the collection of the email address in the settings of our Google form. Okay, so suppose suppose the you have uh, is this suppose you want to you have closed. Suppose you have closed the window, you have st you stop working on your uh... Okay, so suppose you have closed the application, you have uh, uh, what's this? You switch to another task you close the Google Forms uh, window, you can just always go back to it by still clicking the Google Apps here, then look for Forms, then retrieve that file you have uh, created at online quiz. So it's, it's ICT 100, 111 operator, so it's here. Okay, you will know by the time you have created the quiz because there is this uh, D or D when it was uh, created. So you can easily retrieve it. Okay, so click to open. You can edit the quiz again and again. Okay, you can add more. You can add more item if you like. Okay, so right now I am adding another item to my quiz. Okay, then you can Okay, so I have here eight points in this uh, edited uh, quiz. And when students opens, or when student, when a student opens the same link, they, he will already see the updated quiz, okay? They will already see the same, or not just three items quiz, but four. 
not just uh, five, a total of five point quiz, which we did earlier, but eight, okay? So they will be able to see the updated version of your quiz if you have updated your online quiz, okay? So that's it. So that's about the, the creation of an online quiz using the Google Forms. I hope you'll be able to make use of this platform in your assessment as you evaluate the learning of your students because uh, we have to embrace the use of this uh, technology in our classroom this time of pandemic. Okay, so if you have more questions about the online quiz or the use of the Google Forms, you can always uh, reach us, message us, so we can be of help to you. So congratulations for, for bearing with me in this uh, training. I hope it had uh, helped you in your teaching uh, journey. God bless everyone and thank you.